For the benefit of those with the internet, I present to you Perry the Entertainer. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for WWE SmackDown taping results for May the 13th, 2011. Now, this... I haven't seen the actual taping results yet, so let's get this started. Christian comes out and cuts a promo on the Randy Orton beating him for the World Heavyweight Championship. Sorry about that, guys. At last week, Christian announces that he, his his plan to invoke the rematch clause at WWE over the limit. This is not very surprising, but I, it's fine that they do it now rather than later. Because really, I can't stand Christian not being champion. Christian deserves to be the champion, but... They took it off of him after some stupid reason and gave the belt to Orton. Mark Henry and Sheamus come out and they want a title shot as well. Now, Mark Henry, I can see he does not deserve a world title shot. Sheamus, I can think otherwise. Sheamus is main event material. So, I'm surprised they even took him out of the main event. And I hate when my iPod does this. I'm going to try and make it stop doing that next, uh, next week. Uh, they beat down Christian, and Orton makes a save. What a freaking shocker. Isn't it kind of ironic that Christian's best friend, Edge, was in a tag team with Randy Orton, and now Christian and Orton are making an impact? I think that's kind of funny. That's just my opinion. But a tag team match between Christian and Randy Orton versus Mark Henry and Sheamus has been announced for later tonight. Sin Cara beats Daniel Bryan after with Chavo Guerrero on commentary. Now apparently they're having a sort of a program with Sin Cara and Daniel Bryan, not Daniel Bryan, uh, Chavo Guerrero. Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> apparently they're gonna have a program together. I wouldn't doubt it. I find it's actually a good idea. The reason I think it's a good idea is because of the fact that it gives Chavo Guerrero an actual storyline that he can do because he's obviously been off of TV for quite a while now so I think it's a good thing to have him feud especially with uh, a future main eventer in Sin Cara so let's go to the next Layla comes out and cuts a promo on ending the career of Michelle McCool Michael Cole interrupts her with his anti-diva bit but Karma comes out and lays out Layla haha <laughs> pun right there cause uh Layla's finisher is actually called the layout. Um, never mind. <laughs> Karma goes after Cole, but gets away in the coal mine. Karma obviously basically is just trying to get herself out there. I can guarantee you she's going to have a feud in the next week or two. And um, with who, we will find out very soon. I don't know my opinion. My opinion, I think it's going to be Beth Phoenix. Or Natalia, I can see that too. Um... Or Gail Kim, you know, she's like she could be like, okay, we've had our differences in the past, so let's continue those differences. So yeah, going to the next. Uh, I think it's cool that they actually have Cole do something on SmackDown. He's really just there. He's just there. Don't know why. Don't ask me why. Kane beats WWE Intercontinental Champion Wade Barrett via disqualification after interference from the core. Ezekiel Jackson, now a babyface, took out his former faction members. This is obviously really, really dumb booking by WWE. Why did you have their biggest guy, biggest guy, become a babyface? Now, I think this is stupid. I actually think this is all a setup. I don't think Ezekiel Jackson is done with the core. He can't be done with really anything because I can guarantee you after this core stuff is all said and done, he's going to be gone. He's going to be in oblivion. But having a former world heavyweight champion... And it actually, that hasn't lasted a day, or, day. sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I knocked on the camera by accident. <laughs> but no, for having a world heavyweight champion that actually hasn't lasted, or his championship reign didn't last a day. God, what is up with this? Anyway, sorry about that, guys. Go, moving on. The great Kali and Rajan Singh come out for the Kali Kiss Cam. Wow. You can watch this live and guarantee you that, obviously, Jinder Mahal would come out and smacks Kali's cowboy hat off as both Kali and Singh were wearing them. Basically, what they're doing here, 
finally, they actually have a storyline for the Great Kali, but it's with a Canadian. Jinder Mahal is not Indian at all. He is a freaking can can candy Canadian. But uh, the Great Kali is actually from India, so um, I find this is actually really good for Great Cop for the Great Kali because of the fact he hasn't done anything. In the past year, obviously, with that whole Nexus thing, he got attacked by the Nexus, the original Nexus, not the new Nexus. And obviously, bringing up a guy from WWE Developmental, obviously a guy that's been there for about a year or so. But I think it's a good thing that they actually have Jinder Mahal doing something on SmackDown. And actually, why on SmackDown? He should be on Raw. This guy's good. I'm telling you guys right now, this guy's actually really good. But anyway, backstage, World Heavyweight Champion Randy Orton and Christian are showing getting ready for their main event match. I don't even know why Randy Orton's even hold. well, no, not Randy Orton. Why is Christian even in this picture? Now, Christian, he was not, he was nothing, guarantee you, he was nothing. I mean, no offense to anybody, he was nothing until Christian, or not Christian, he was nothing until Edge retired, really, guaranteed. You guys have to agree with me on that. He was nothing until Edge appeared, and Edge, uh, retired, but he was just really nothing. I, I can guarantee you, he was on the fence probably getting of, of getting, uh, released, but anyway, moving on. Backstage, Wade Barrett offers Ezekiel Jackson a shot at the WWE Intercontinental title at Over the Limit. Obviously... That he's going to accept this, and probably, I wouldn't doubt it, they have Ezekiel Jackson go over Wade Barrett. Ezekiel Jackson finally can show his dominance on SmackDown by winning an actual title, not winning the ECW title for a mere five minutes. Finally, he can actually hold a title that is not, you know, like, is actually useful but people would think otherwise because obviously Wade Barrett is not really main event material anymore considering his boot from the Nexus. Moving on. Cody Rhodes cuts a heel promo then beats Ted DiBiase. This is actually very good because I heard Cody Rhodes, his heel promos have been getting a whole lot better. Especially from his dashing days to his undashing days. Um, That's just stupid. I don't understand why they're holding Ted DiBiase back I can guarantee you speaking of the legacy group I can guarantee you besides Orton if you if you had to choose between these two people would say that Ted DiBiase would have a brighter future than Cody Rhodes would I know I would hate to say it but it's true he did for a little while he even got a WWE championship match he even got well, obviously, Cody Rhodes did, too, but Cody Rhodes got himself potentially disqualified. But, anyway, moving on to the last part of the show. Randy Orton and Christian beat Mark Henry and Sheamus. Orton and Christian hit their finisher simultaneously, with Christian taking care of Sheamus and Orton taking care of Henry. This... Why, 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 why are you having the face triumph on SmackDown every time? You can't have that happen all the time. Just saying, you can't have that happen all the time. Um, just saying, you can't have that happen all the time. You have to have a heel in there sometime that actually takes the advantage, and you're not gonna, hopefully you're not gonna do another Batista move from 2005 all the way to 2007. But hopefully you don't do that. Well, 2004, really, that entire year, plus 2005 a little bit. Um, hopefully you really, 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 really don't do that with Orton. Orton really doesn't even deserve to be on SmackDown. He should have stayed on Raw. But anyway, you know I'm I'm sick a little bit, guys. So you guys, you guys are even lucky you got a. Uh, show out of me today but anyway this is probably gonna be the only video you see today maybe this week sorry about the um illness issue uh, i'll try to work that out later um but i i thank you guys for tuning in to um my spoiler show like i said um if you are not a fan of spoilers don't watch this video until 
after SmackDown. That's just my opinion. I don't, I don't do any sort of live reaction with SmackDown anymore. SmackDown really has disappointed me ever since really Edge retired, really, because I think I found that Edge, Edge was like the main part. So I, that was even he was the reason why I even tuned into SmackDown. But anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Yes, there's a dark match. Uh, you can read that. I'm not gonna say it. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in to the SmackDown taping results from Nashville for May 13th, 2011. Uh, let me go probably take a shower and take some medicine or something. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in and peace out.